Hello dear students, once again welcome to a brand new session of IAS Baba. Here what we are going to do today is, as you know, uh, for your UPSC exam, one of the most important areas for you to analyze your trends, analyze what kind of future questions can be possible and generally to be prepared with what kind of, you know, because you are preparing for UPSC and then you need to know what has UPSC asked in the past. Your major source for all of these kind of activities is your previous year questions. And this is where each subject has a very huge repository of previous year questions. And if I'm looking at the previous year's questions, at least in the last 10 years from 2013 to 23, if you take roughly each subject would have a repository of maybe 160, 200 plus questions which are there. Now, if you need to be equipped for this exam, one thing is you have to have mastery over these questions. Now, when I'm saying mastery, I don't mean that you have to sit with each question and mug up the answer of the question. What you have to do is take each question, understand what theme it is from and get the necessary information from it. Now, it sounds very easy when I say it like that, but once you sit and try to do it, it's a very difficult process. So, this is the reason why we have decided to help you out. What we are going to do right now is we take each subject, we divide it according to the different themes that have recurrently come in that subject and we have compiled all the questions that would come under that specific theme and we would discuss it. For example, if I am taking environment, under environment you have themes like species, basics of environment, environment law, organizations both international and Indian, environmental degradation, etc. Protected areas, etc. So what happens is I have divided the questions into these different different themes. We take up a theme and we discuss all the questions that would have come under that and thereby instead of just randomly solving UPSC questions, previous year questions, what you are trying to understand is un in that theme what is a future question that can be asked. How much do I need to learn in that specific theme? All of these grey areas become a little bit more clear for you. In that note, the first theme and the set of questions that I am taking up in these sessions is something called a species. Now, if I take the last 10 years of environment questions, roughly if I look at all the other themes, the law, organization, they roughly have around maybe 15 to maybe maximum 20 questions. Okay. But when I look at species, species is one theme in which in the last 10 years, over 50 questions. have come from. Just think of it. So, that means a yearly average of 5 questions per year. Now, in these 5 questions, you have what I generally call as your star species for which you have to be prepared every year, no matter what. Like for example, the Bengal tiger, the Asian elephant, the gear lion, several species are there which are the star species. We've discussed this in our species videos that are there. I hope you've seen those videos already. Now here, when it comes to this specific thing, so in these five questions, there are maybe star species. There is a section where they generally ask invasive species. And there is also any species that have come about in current affairs. And this is the reason because the, the area from where they can ask these questions are so large. That's why you see an yearly average of almost four to five questions in this specific category. Thereby, if I take the previous year questions of the total previous year questions of environment, this specific theme called as species has the highest number of previous year questions. So now I hope I have established how much important this area is. Without much delay, let's start looking into each and every question that have come under the theme of species.
the first question that we are going to discuss in the species theme is a 2023 question about marsupials. The question reads as marsupials are not naturally found in India. Statement 1. St statement 2 reads as marsupials can thrive only in montane grasslands with no predators. Now, understand this. First of all, to, under, to get to this question, you need to know what is a marsupial. So, a marsupial is basically a type of mammal. We all belong to the category of mammals, but marsupials are a specific kind of mammal wherein they give birth to their young one in a very premature form. Okay, And it's outside the body of the mother that the complete development of the smaller organism happens. Okay, Now, I want you to understand it is a premature birth of the organism that is happening in this manner. So, marsupials are such kind of organisms and some very common examples of marsupials are your kangaroos, wombats, opossums, wallabies, etc. Okay. Now, again out of this also the most famous ones that we would have known is maybe kangaroos etc. But I want you to understand if you look at all of these specific categories of marsupials, they occur in your continents of Australia, New Zealand certain areas, then they occur in South America, all of these areas you do see these marsupial organisms. So now with this information when you look at the question, first part says they are not naturally found in India. And this is a very true thing if you are very perceptive about the different species in our country, you do know that we do not have natural occurrence of your marsupials. So this statement is correct. Okay, we do have it in zoos, etc., but no natural occurrence. Second statement says marsupials can thrive only in montane grasslands with no predators. Now, here when I said itself, I have told you these different categories. Montane grasslands means your grasslands that are on top or on the edges of your mountains. But I just showed you it is there in Australia, New Zealand, South America, etc. And these are not uh, just places which have mountainous grasslands. They have forests, they have forest floors, they have different habitats over here. And marsupials are or can thrive in any of these habitats. So, this statement which says only in grasslands, that is wrong. So, when you look at all of the statements, you can see statement C happens to be the answer for this. Okay. Now, this is still here. Okay. So, what have they taken? What do you think I, my, my takeaway is there from this question? So, I have understood that UPSC is finding this category of mammals a little bit interesting. And they are not asking about humans or anything which are the normal mammals. They are asking about exceptional mammals. They asked about marsupials. And this is where there is also another category of exceptional mammals that can be a future question. What is that? Let's see that and let's jot it down for your future question part. There are certain mammals that lay eggs. Mammals normally give birth to their young ones, but then there are certain mammals which lay eggs. And they, when you look at it, you do have some occurrence of it in India. Some species do occur in India. The most common egg-laying mammals are, just note this down, there is something called as echidna, there is platypus, etc. Okay? So, my takeaway from this previous year question is this. We solved that question, got the information for that particular question and we try to understand few important informations for a future question. So, I hope this question is clear to you. Moving forward, we have to look at the second question which is the lion, consider the following fauna, lion tail macaque, malabar civet, sambar deer, how many of them are generally nocturnal or most active after sunset? Now, here again, I am seeing the fact that they have asked us or they have bothered to ask something about a feature of an organism. See, when I take up, up any kind of a thing about an organism, what are the major features? What it eats, how it reproduces, 
what is its general activity, its functions, its level of conservation. Okay, level of conservation was always an important area. Uh, what it eats, what it how, what is its daily routine like? These are emerging trends whenever you are you're looking at the recent UPSC questions. So here they have asked a question about three major species, and they are asking if they are nocturnal. That means if they are active at night. Let's have a look at these specific species. First of all, when you look at this lion-tailed macaque. Lion-tailed macaque is primarily a monkey species, okay, and this has been listed as an endangered species. You do primarily see it in the Western Ghat region, the rainforests region, etc. Okay. And the lion-tailed macaque, like most of the other monkey species, very similar to your human uh, organisms, this is a diurnal species. Diurnal means they are active in the daytime. Okay. Moving on to the second one, which is a Malabar civet. The Malabar civet is primarily your organism that also occurs in your western guards. It is also in a very, it, it's, it's, it, it, the sighting of it is extremely rare, okay. So, you do not see it in a very common area, though you say it is in the western guards, the evidences of getting it seen in the last five to six years are very close to none, okay. So, this is a very rare species. One other feature that adds to its elusiveness is the fact that it is a nocturnal species. Okay, one more thing is this specific Malabar civet, it releases off a certain enzyme, a, a certain chemical called as your civetone. The civetone is considered to have a lot of useful properties and this is one of the other reasons why this Malabar civet was hunted and tracked down and maybe it was poached also for a long time. Okay, but as you can understand, it is a nocturnal species. Moving on to the next species, which is your Samba deer. Samba deer again is a very elusive, shy deer species categorized as vulnerable by the IUCN, and this is also a nocturnal species. So, when you look at it, out of all the three listed over here, only the Malabar civet and the Samba deer are nocturnal. That means out of all the three listed, only two are your nocturnal species. Okay. Okay. From this question, what is my takeaway? Next time I learn a species that is there in news, I just don't stop at where or what is the habitat of it. I venture in, I try to understand, just keep a note of this, what it eats when it sleeps and what is its breeding cycle like. These three major things also I include whenever I am learning a species. So, this is my takeaway from this previous year question.